Hello everyone! Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. Ito na naman ako, yun yung nurse educator and lactation consultant. So today, it's going to be interesting topic na pag-usapan natin. Um, may nagtanong sa akin, isang breastfeeding moms, nagtatanong siya sa akin na kung ano ba talaga ang lasa or flavor ng breast milk natin. Okay. Um, there was uh, one time, isa akong pasyente sa aming breastfeeding clinic, na curious talaga yung siya kung ano talaga ang lasa ng milk niya. So, she tried it. She tried it. Um, uh, even gusto ding malaman ng husband niya kung ano talaga ang lasa ng breast milk. So, they tried it. They tried it. And uh, there's so many explanation in when, when, when I read in the book and the research about milk flavor. Kaya isa-share ko sa inyo kung ano talaga ang ang flavor ng ating milk at bakit ito nagustuhan ni baby. Okay? Um, isa, we know that our breast milk is the most nutritious milk in the world. Kaya ito'y tinatawag na gold milk or the super food or the super milk. Walang katumbas sa ating breast milk as compared to any artificial milk. Um, the only way why we need artificial milk ay dahil need it because the baby needs it. May mga komplikasyon si baby at may mga komplikasyon din si mom. Kaya we also uh, take value doon sa mga uh, artificial milk na ginagamit ng ibang mga nanay ngayon. So, when it comes to milk flavor na sa ating, sa ating breast milk, bibigyan ko sa inyong uh, isa, isa sa mga, mga hint about milk flavor. Based on pinag-aralan namin as a lactation consultant, ang talagang sinasabi namin sa aming mga pasyente, whatever you eat is the flavor of your milk. I'll give you an example. Let's say, itong araw na to, napagtripan mo talagang kumain ng mangga at alamang. Mm -hmm. Napaka, tumutulo-tulo yung lahoy ko. <laughs> Just the thought of it. Yun naman talaga ang kaugali ang comfort food ng mga Filipino when it comes to comfort native food. Mangga na may alamang. Super sarap. Super sarap. So, when you think about it, the sourness of the mango, isasawsaw mo dun sa alamang na maalat. Mm -hmm. Combination ng salt and sour, ganun din ang malalasahan don sa milk mo. Now, you may be questioning, bakit ang gustuhan nyo na baby kung salty at sour kind of yung milk natin? Well, when you are pregnant, itong mga pagkain na to, kinakain mo. So, itong mga lasa ng food na kinakain mo is not new to the baby's taste. Mm -hmm. It's not new to the baby's taste. taste. That's why when I teach prenatal class, uh, pinapaintindi ko sa mga mga estudyante kong mga nanay to be na you need to eat whatever you want to eat now ngayong buntis ka. Kasi may kalimitan ka, ka, ka pamahiin, mga ninuno natin na huwag kang kumain ng ganito, bawal yan. Unless talagang uh, yung mga raw, raw seafood, mga sushi, mga mga sliced meat, yun talaga, pinagbabawal ko yun. Pag ako'y nagtuturo ng prenatal class, bawal talaga yung mga ganun, okay? Or eating too much uh, uh, fish, seafood, especially tuna na mataas ang mercury, kailangan lang talagang small portion ng tuna uh, pagbuntis ka, okay? Because of the high content of mercury. Um, but the rest of the food that we normally eat every day, yun ang flavor ng milk na iniinom ni baby when you're breastfeeding. Now, papaano mo ma-encourage si baby na dumedi ng dumedi kung babaguhin mo ang flavor ng milk mo? Okay. Na-mention na ko na ito before in other, my other videos, but idadagdag ko lang dito for, for the new subscribers and for some of you who never, who did not watch that video, para alam ninyo kung papaano nyo Ma, ma encourage the baby na to to breastfeed more uh, because of the flavor of your milk. Now, based doon sa pinag-aralan namin and based doon sa research, the most uh, 
um, flavor of of uh, food na hindi ayaw si baby is the chocolate. Mm -hmm. The chocolate. Isa din sa pinakaayaw ni baby na nagkakanagre-react si baby is yung uh, mga acidic food like uh, too much cabbage, too much beans, yung mga ganong klase ng pagkain. Medyo nakaka-acidic, uh, ma-acidic yun sa chenny baby. Okay. But, sa lahat ng mga spices na sini, uh, in, ano, sa study, sa research, ang garlic talaga ang pinaka nakaka-catch ng attention sa baby when it comes to food flavor. Gusto nila yung garlicky flavor na sa food. Okay, so you have the idea now. Um, baka naman isang cup na garlic ang ilagay nyo para dumendi si baby. Mild lang. Uh, kung ano yung normal na ginagawa nyo when you're pregnant na nagluluto kayo, ganun lang. Okay, um, huwag naman masyadong damihan dahil baka naman mapadami na too much spices hindi naman gugustuhan ni baby. So just balance the taste of your cooking when you put a little bit of garlic. Sa ginger... Uh, ginger, pag, ma pag masyadong madami, medyo maanghang na. Too spicy yung food nyo. Spicy food, sometimes, it also affect your mouth. Because, look at this way. Every food that we eat, let's say, kakain ka ng carrots ngayon, ano, it can really pass your mouth. Pag kakain ka ng carrots ngayon, yung mouth mo magiging sweet. Kasi sweet ang carrots eh. Uh, ang color naman ng milk mo, nagbabago din. Nagbabago mga parang orange din ang milk mo. So, don't be surprised sa texture ng kinakain mo. Let's see, kakain ka ng vegetable na beets. B-E-E-T-S. Yung beets na mapula siya, purple na dark. Pag kinain mo, pati ngipin mo, nagiging, nagiging reddish purple. Ganun din, mag, nakakapag-affect din yun sa milk supply mo. Because again, our milk supply, a part of it is water. The body fluid that we have, part of this is water. Almost like 70 to 80% sa milk natin is water. Okay? So, 30 to 20% lang yung milk within that fluid na lumalabas sa breast natin. So, lahat talaga, halos lahat ng kinakain natin is coming from uh, the flavor of it, coming from the food that we ate. So, Kung ako sa iyo mga moms, kung kung limited ang budget nyo, uh, na bumili ng mga supplement, dahil alam kong kahit sa ang corner ng palengke, ng tiangge, ng department store, nakikita mo lahat yung mga supplements. Target talaga ang Asia. Itong mga supplement manufacturers na to, target nila ang Asia. Kasi ang Asia, ang isa sa pinaka uh, hindi masyadong strict na mga bansa na kayang i-carry nila, na i-promote nila itong mga supplement kahit hindi FDA approved. Lagi lang nakalagay, clinical tested, blah, 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 blah. So, nandun na tayo. Okay. Um, it, it's a common scenario makikita ninyo na maraming mga stores nagtitinda ng mga supplement. Think about it. If you want to live a healthy life, na walang mga artificial uh, ingredients all this sasabihin nila these are pure organic no artificial flavor and stuff like that uh, still uh, um, it's it's formulated okay um, he, it's not FDA approved so nasa sa inyo ang risk when you're taking this supplement nasa sa inyo uh, dahil it's from your bulsa um, minsan uh, gumagaya kayo sa kung anong tinitake ng mga kumari nyo and you think it's effective and you see the result, go for it. Pero kung sasabihin mo lang na you're taking it and you don't see any result, then why continue it? Why not eat the healthy one? Okay? Why not eat malunggay leaves? Why not do plant your own malunggay? Why not do papaya? Uh, papaya can increase your milk. Why not eat broccoli? Dahil yung broccoli can increase your milk. So, itong mga flavor ng, ng food that you're eating when you're pregnant, immune na si baby noon. Ngayon, pag nag-take ka nitong mga supplement na to, na hindi immune si baby, dahil hindi ka nag-take nito yung pregnant kayo, it may affect the flavor of your milk. Again, kung anong nilagay mo sa bibig mo, it goes into your body, 
it pass into your mouth. Okay? Yun ang tandaan nyo. Ngayon, kung magpapauto kayo doon sa mga kung ano-ano mga commercials, kung ano-ano mga sinasabi na ito bilhin nyo pang pataas ng, ng gatas nyo, pang pa... If you would rather want to eat the fresh one na nakikita mo, ehalo mo sa gulay, then do it. Instead of buying this expensive stuff na it's not 100% guaranteed that it can really help make make you healthy, make your baby healthy, make your milk supply boost, okay? So, payo ko lang sa inyo dahil sa dinami-dami ng mga um, mga nagkalat ngayon na mga supplements. You have to be very smart on choosing the right one. Dahil every time you take that, it passes into your milk. Less is maybe maybe 5%, maybe 10% of that medication can pass through your milk. Na minsan hindi sinasabi ng mga doktor. So, normally, let's say, mag-iinom ka ng gamot para sa ubo. O iinom ka ng gamot para sa sipon ngayon. Or para sa lagnat. Normally, about 2 to 5% of that medication will pass into your breast milk. So, anything talaga na kakainin mo, it pass to your breast milk. Now, paano? Pag yung tinitake mong supplement, na hindi immune si baby noon, dahil nung buntis ka, hindi ka naman nag-take noon, it affect your milk supply. It affect the flavor of your milk. Kaya ayaw dumede si baby. So, be very careful mga moms kung anong tititake nyo. Alam kong marami ding mga healthcare providers na nag-promote din itong mga supplement na to, which should not be like that, especially if they're F they were not FDA approved. Um, because of incentives, yes, nagagawa yan ng ibang mga healthcare provider because of the incentives. But, kayo yung consumers eh. Kayo yung nagtitake. Kayo yung gumagastos. So, be very aware na lahat ng pinapasok nyo sa bibig nyo, ipasa in your mouth, pinapasa din yun sa anak nyo. So, be, just be very careful. If you're not feeling safe na titake nyo to, so, do the vegetables, do the organic one, do the, you know, all these things na alam kong mahirap minsan magluto kayo, kaya sasabihin nyo, mag-supplement na lang ako. You know what? There's nothing better than your own cooking. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better. Kasi alam mo kung anong timpla, alam mo kung anong ilagay mo, alam mong safe yon. So, it's a wake-up call, mga moms. So, I hope you learned something from this video again. Please do the like button, share this video. Thank you again sa mga bago kong subscribers. Alam kong may, may, uh, may bibigay ako sa inyong mga lessons about you, your baby, your life, your family, and your education as well. So follow me. I will continue doing this YouTube channel. Um, just a journey na makakatulong ako sa ating mga kababayan dyan. Na. Alam kong kulang na kulang kahit tas kaalaman when it comes to breastfeeding. Okay? Uh, so, mo to the healthcare providers, pasan nyo to. It's better for them to know what is really based on research. Para may kaalaman din sila, then they'll be able to teach those moms na kailangan talaga ng right knowledge. So, bye for now. See you every two to three days. Pangako ko, may video ako para sa inyo. A lesson to learn that you can apply it in life for your baby and yourself. Bye for now. See you.